As we all know, the Wheel of Time encompasses a fantastic worldview displaying numerous religious elements found in real world religions, including but not limited to Hinduism, Islam, Buddhism, Christianity, and Taoism. And as well as this, each nation has also been infused with cultural traits taken from a wide array of countries from across the world. The purpose of this video is to delve within the real world aspects such as cultural or religious traits from which Robert Jordan would have taken inspiration from to help create his worldview. And on top of this, I will also be discussing my personal cultural discoveries while reading through the series. As we all know, the Wheel of Time has a very monotheistic construct when it comes to dealing with what we would call a higher power. In the series, the world's god is referred to as the creator, while the devil is known as the dark one or shaitan, which coincidentally is also what Muslims use when referring to the devil. The creator naturally reflects in a very barebone sense the Old Testament conception from Christianity of a supreme being who created the universe and everything within it. But the key difference being that the creator in the Wheel of Time is considerably more similar to the god in the worldview known as Deism, where the world is created and then the creator completely retires from any further activities in that universe whatsoever, leaving all to make do on their own. But at the moment of creation, another entity was brought into existence. And that entity's sole purpose was to destroy the wheel and the pattern along with it. But with the creator choosing not to interfere with the events that will unfold upon the land, as a consequence of the dark one being created, the pattern is left to fend for itself as it looks to create balance and harmony in the world. To counteract this, the dragon is reborn a somewhat messiah figure who will both destroy and save the world. And so the struggle between good and evil truly begins. The struggle of good versus evil can be traced back through history with many ancient religions having scriptures detailing the struggle. For example, in the Zoroastrian religion, one of the world's earliest dating back to 5th century BCE, the supreme deity known as Aru Amazda created two entities, the chaotic and destructive spirit Amirand and his beneficent twin brother Spentamainu. Fast forward thousands of years later to present day and the major religions of Christianity and Islam epitomize this very struggle. And the Wheel of Time is no different with the very heart of the story being that centuries-old struggle of good versus evil, which is continuously played out in modern-day society or art. Moving away from ethos and religious inspirations, let's turn our attention to the creation of the nations that inhabit Robert Jordan's world. The Westlands consist of 14 nations that inhabit over 3,500 miles, all of which will have traits that we as readers would have noticed while reading through the series. Some of these we would have picked up upon while others would have gone unnoticed. This all depending on our own knowledge of the wider world outside of our countries of origin or where we have spent the vast majority of our lives. With Robert Jordan liking to mix various traits from across multiple cultures from the real world into single nations, thus challenging our preconceptions that we have of nations based purely off of their cultural traits and religious beliefs. A great example of this would be the Ail, who are situated out in the race, essentially the equivalent of the Sahara Desert. He wanted to play around with people's perception of what their complexions would look like. Describing the Aiyu as very tall, having pale natural skin and red hair certainly is the polar opposite of how you would generally imagine a nation who live out in the desert. Add into this the battle tactics that Land describes to Rand in the Shadow Rises which they employ in battle are identical to the tactics favoured by the Zulu. 
and having traits from Arabic culture such as the fifth and sister wives and this leaves you with an exotic nation such as the Aiyu. For this next part of the video I thought it would be nice if I could go into some of my own personal discoveries while reading through the book and share them with you. And that moves us on to Arad Doman and Domani culture. Interestingly enough, while on my first read through of The Great Hunt, I happened to stumble upon cultural aspects from my own heritage which had whether intentionally or not been used to create parts of the Domani culture. And on top of this, extraordinarily enough, Robert Jordan had partially named Arad Doman using the Persian language. As we all know, Arad Doman's capital city is Bandaiban. Interestingly, if you translate Bandar from Persian into English, it comes out as harbour or port. And where is Bandaiban located? Right by the Arif Ocean. As you could imagine, it was pretty cool coming across this particular discovery while on my first read through of The Great Hunt as a result of my Persian background. And so it was nice to be able to read something that was painting what I considered to be a positive light on that. And I'm sure anybody else that had had a similar experience while reading through this series would agree with me. And the similarities don't end there either. Another interesting similarity between the two cultures is that of their love for bargaining while trading, better known as haggling. So in case you didn't know, Iranians love to negotiate and they see it as a necessary part of every deal they make. The main negotiation tactic used is that of time, so if they know that you are under time pressure, they will use that to their advantage. Now of course Robert Jordan flipped the gender role in reverse, so in the books it's the Damani women who are known to be great negotiators and are one of the few merchants in the land who can hold their own while negotiating with the sea folk. It would actually be really interesting to see what some of you guys have discovered while reading through the books. If you could leave a comment down below, it'd be pretty interesting to see some of the cultural discoveries that you've happened to find. And we've come to the end of today's video. I hope you've all enjoyed it. It's a little bit different from the normal content that I have on my channel, but I wanted to try and move away from just reporting on real time TV show news. Leave a like if you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next video.